the Modi government? What has the man in the machine accomplished is the answer everyone has been seeking in the past few days. And for once, on a real estate platform like the property show, even we have a legitimate reason to delve into that question. For once, housing and smart cities are at the forefront of policy making and not a subject relegated to the back seat. For once, I have industry players and policy makers eager to come and share their thoughts on the program. We didn't have to chase them to come and that's saying it all. Well, all of that should make today's debate an exciting and informative one. Welcome everyone to yet another discussion on 100 days of Modi government. Only this time we will focus on homes, cities and urban spaces. My panelists today, Mufatraj Muno, Chairman Kalpatru Group. Ramesh Nair, CEO, Business and International Director, JLL India. Srinath Sridharan, Convener Group Management Center, DHFL Financial Services. Dr. Arvind Prasad, Director General Fiki, Arun Mishra, former Housing Secretary, and we'll also be joined a little later on the show by Shailesh Patak, Executive Director of the Bhartiya Group. So I do have some of the key points on what has been the most exciting part of this government. Well, of course, some of the key things that we know, his PM's most ambitious project of creating 100 smart cities, which has now got wings with Singapore and Japan committing investment and technology assistance. Government has set 2019 as the deadline to deliver the first three smart cities, all of which will be built as part of the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor. So I'm going to take one at a time and then, of course, go on to reeling out the rest of the 100-day report card. Mr. Mufatraj, smart cities has just become the buzzword this week with the Japan visit. But do you think that in the 100 days, that's the most novel idea which has come from the Modi government or there's something else which has excited you of the first 100 days? What have been the hits and misses? At least, you know, I mean, this smart city idea is a great idea and it, uh, it, if it is implemented, uh, which I'm sure uh, they will do. Maybe the speed may be a question, uh, but that will definitely solve a lot of issues. But what much more important than that is that they must plan the existing cities, how they can upgrade that, because that's also a major task, which government has to take it up. Arun Mishra, what do you think? 100 smart cities and you know, there's just so much excitement around the Prime Minister's visit to two countries, one after the other, Japan, you know, looking at Kyoto, looking at Varanasi, saying how do you actually change a, a legacy city into a smart city, all of that. It just sounds so exciting. I'm just wondering how it will happen though. Uh, <clears throat> well, the uh, details will have to be spelled out clearly, but the fact is that when you talk about a smart city, a new 100 smart cities, uh, it really opens up an area for investment. It opens up a different way of looking at urban space management. Like my predecessor said, it's very important that we also look into the existing cities, but these 100 smart cities will definitely fire the imagination of the investing community. Mm -hmm. All right, fire the imagination of investment community. Shailesh Patak has just joined in and I know for him, this is of course now the agenda, smart cities. Uh, Shailesh Patak, go ahead, tell us. I mean, there's many a slip between the cup and the lip though. The Singapore government also wants to know, all right, we're ready to come and help you out. But what do you mean by a smart city? Is it just IT enablement or is it smart city all the way? Where do we start? And where do you think this government will start? Thank you. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this and we believe that the smart city that we are putting up in Hebel in Bangalore represents the best in, in class uh, in many ways. The design objective for our city is that a three-year-old can walk to her school without any adult supervision. So suddenly it's much more than technology. It is about urban design. Can people walk to work? Can people cycle to work? Can we design intelligent transport systems? So, you know, IT is just one of the many things that goes into a smart city. And we've gone across the world trying to, to imbibe elements of smart cities from various places. And we hope to invite decision makers to our Bangalore site. We're going to make four more cities in South India. And of course, uh, we're going to uh, call them smart cities for the residents. It's not for the technology companies or the 
real estate guys it is for the citizens of that city mm -hmm. ramesh nair if i'm looking at smart cities the government has actually spoken about a lot of them around the delhi mumbai industrial corridor they talk about dholera they talk about uh, bitkin and a global city you know so the the canvas seems so large to me uh, there are private players uh, such as shailesh who are looking to develop their own then there is a government agenda of developing many around corridors which they think are growth corridors uh, is it too mammoth a task or do you think that not at all it's fairly achievable definitely uh, i think it's one of the good initiatives uh, the government has uh, taken uh, announcing these uh, smart cities uh, but i think it's uh, manish a little too early to uh, actually uh, judge the government based on uh, 100 days uh, real estate uh, you know uh, has a lag time of uh, 9 to 12 months uh, so first we need to see the G gdp go up and then uh, real estate markets will uh, start uh, start improving uh election results uh, don't uh, make or break uh, uh, real estate markets uh, real estate fundamentals and real estate sentiments uh, impact uh, real estate markets at least from the sentiments front uh, what we are seeing um, across uh, the country our teams uh, across uh, across asset classes whether it's uh, residential retail office industrial land all of them are a lot more uh, busier than what they were 3 uh, months back uh demand is definitely uh, not gone up in the second quarter uh, just before coming here uh, i checked the numbers office demand uh, last year second quarter was 7 million uh, this year second quarter 7 million residential demand last year uh, uh, second quarter 50000 units uh, this year actually it's dropped 37000 units that's uh, mainly because of election uh, time uh, not too many developers launching new projects and lot of people uh, kind of uh, sitting on the fence what we are seeing is uh, there is definite uh, positive uh, momentum in the market uh, let me give you an example uh, two years back uh, we were trying to sell a land worth 700 crores in uh, mumbai there were just uh, three bidders uh, to buy that land last month we were trying to sell a land which is uh, more than 1000 crores uh, in mumbai and there were 13 bidders uh, for that land so i think overall uh, that shows that uh, positive momentum is uh, improving if you look at the bulge uh, bracket uh, sovereign funds uh, names like uh, adia cppib uh, qia apg all these guys uh, today are uh, looking at committing uh, more towards uh, india that's again a, a positive sign so again uh, coming back i think it's little too early uh, we should have this uh, discussion uh, probably in another 6 to 9 months time how how can that happen ramesh nai everyone's talking about 100 days we have to talk about 100 days is this of course a little heartbreaking when you see the numbers and the sentiments in real estate but uh, uh, shrina shridhar do you second ramesh nai's views that at least on the investment front if not in the real estate say on the real estate sales front on the investment front the excitement is returning i think slightly difference of uh, view with ramesh uh, because we have never seen uh, any uh, slack in demand at the uh, tier 2 tier 3 segment if you look at the uh, bulge bracket purchase in terms of 1 crore plus probably there could have been a slow down but the segments we serve they've always uh, kept on increasing so having said that uh, any policy framework uh, land being a state subject needs to be adopted in each of these states and also it as ramesh said i would agree with him there is needs a percolation time of about a year before we actually see any impact in real estate development but from the customer demand of take uh, entire to tier 3 not at all uh, i think it's just been growing uh, elections or no election uh, uh, first home purchase especially uh, for the indian consumer is an emotional attachment and a prime financial need as well so that's where i am uh, so no, no slow down at all that we have seen within our group my goodness that's music to the ears but i think overall data is speaking a very different or telling a very different story dr arvin prasad i mean fikki in collaboration with night frank released a report very recently and really talked about a turnaround in sentiments but i'm going to ask you a larger question because you represent an industry body which of course is catches the pulse of the country what do you think i mean 100 days what are the hits and misses no as you said that uh, real estate or any other industry the overall economy is going to matter so you just had two days back the first release of gdp 
and that grew from at 5.7 percent from 4.6 percent earlier. Of course, that was for the you know the first quarter of this year. So partly for this government and partly the earlier government, but broadly that. Uh, brought out the sentiments. So the real estate will also be ultimately affected by the broader economic sentiments we have. Uh, within, uh, during this government, as you saw, uh, saw heard the other speakers, that the 100 smart days cities concept has really ignited the imagination. But there are also some concrete achievements in terms of REIT, Real Estate Infrastructure Trust, uh, the announcement on the tax policies, which was creating some difficulties, and also SEVI has come out of the guidelines. Uh, for the long-term financing, the banks have been given some facilities where they can um, uh, issue long-term bonds. Uh, the insurance bill, unfortunately, it could not be passed in this session, but insurance bill raising of FDI in insurance is also related to raising of FDI in pension. And these two will provide long-term financing. Uh, so on uh, the tax laws, there has been some clarity, though some other are, are expected. There are many other things which are uh, to be followed by the government, uh, but broadly there has been a very positive move and sentiments getting reflected in overall enhanced GDP, uh, the increased interest in real estate, uh, we have a mixed response in terms of what is the response from the real estate consumer side, but the, from the government side, they raise the you know the um, the uh, up to two lakhs interest um, um, from the tax uh, benefit, and also um, uh, the, so, so there there, there are uh, indication from the government, uh, the real estate income, and the whole economy is to move around this industrial corridor, economic activities and urbanization. So you have Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor, you have Amritsar-Calcutta uh, corridor, you have Chennai-Bengaluru corridor, Bengaluru-Mumbai -Mum corridor. So the framework has been clearly announced. Okay. Uh, and obviously, as uh, the previous speaker mentioned, 100 days is too a small time to make any critical judgment. But directions are definitely very positive on all sides. Let's move beyond uh, uh, the smart cities concept per se. Even if you look at urban infrastructure now, the Urban Development Ministry has framed a 25-point charter for urban planning and management. It's, you know, talking about things like infrastructure, energy efficiency. It's also talking about waste management. Where is the capacity? It's a very uh, uh, big challenge. And if I can just sort of sum it up, you know, the uh, Varanasi-Kyoto Agreement was not signed by the mayor of Varanasi called Ram Gopal Mohale. It was signed by the Indian ambassador who is a very illustrious person, Deepaji. But the problem of capacity, both in the elected officials and the appointed officials at the city government level, is one of the biggest things that will hold back urbanization in India. And the only thing I can think of is, uh, uh, instead of you know uh, the, the central level or the state level, we need these capacities at the city level. Any city outside India, uh, look at Kyoto, Mayor uh, Kadokawa is the 26th mayor of Kyoto. Kyoto has a population of 1.4 million, 14 lakh. Varanasi has a population of 1.2 million, 12 lakh. But there is a world of difference between these two cities. So capacities at the city level are our biggest challenge. How have we solved it? We have a 126 acre uh, town uh, uh, city, Bharatiya city in Bangalore. And we have, as you said, talked about energy efficiency, We've talked about recycling, we've talked about sustainability, and this entire master planning has gone in for the last four years. This kind of capacity we need to build in every city government. Mm -hmm. Okay, Arun Mishra, look at the things that you attempted to do during your tenure in the housing ministry. Framing the real estate regulator bill, looking at the issue of single window clearance, uh, there was, of course, also heading the task force on creating and financing affordable housing, introducing, implementing affordable housing policy, creating credit risk guarantee fund. The list is fairly long, uh, Mr. Mishra. So it wasn't as if there was not intention earlier as well. It just never got translated. Do you get, you know, now that you're out, outside of the government viewing this, you've got a ringside view of all that's happening or, or has happened in the first 100 days, do you get more confidence on the implementation front? How will it all happen? Uh, you see, there are two important things which have been announced by the present government. One, of course, is a target of housing for all by 2022. And then, of course, total sanitation coverage by 2017. 
So between these two major goals, I think most of the issues that are that are being discussed about capacity building, making the municipalities functional, implementing the affordable housing programs, uh, streamlining the procedures, all of this will have to be put into place. Only then these two major targets can be achieved. So when you really get into the details of implementing these two major targets, housing for all by 2022 and uh, sanitation by 2017, all the steps that we had initiated in the last three years will be taken to its logical end. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I'm quite excited because these are two very aspirational goals, very challenging goals, but I also believe that they are doable goals. Okay. Despite the lack of capacity that you are talking about, of course, it will take time to build up the capacity. But even with the current level of capacities that we have at the state level, central level and the municipality level, I think these two goals are worthy of pursuing. And uh, I personally feel that uh, three months, 100 days is hardly a time in which you can really assess the yeah. performance of any, any individual, what to speak of a government as large as the Indian government. So I'm sure it, it, it shouldn't okay. be too difficult. So, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's doable even with the current capacity because you just suddenly can't make, uh, you know, build capacity overnight and the ball has to get rolling or set rolling right away. We're going to come back and delve into, you know, how do you get the ball rolling when it comes to housing for all by 2022, when it comes to smart cities. And of course, there is a big challenge which we always have debated, land acquisition. You want to create brand new cities along the industrial corridors you need that land from farmers how will that happen without the amendment of the current land acquisition act in the country stay with us we're looking at 100 days report card of the modi government the intention spelled out because housing is a long-term work it cannot happen over time but intention itself how do you place it at the moment